Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today we're going to take a look at Lego set 41757 which is the Friends Botanical Garden. I appreciate that I am incredibly late to the game with this one. I did consider whether it was even worth making this video but what you don't know is that I am a bit of a botanical garden connoisseur. Maybe saying I'm an expert might be taking it a bit too far but I have been visiting them since before I can remember. So I didn't really want to let this set pass me by without sharing my thoughts. So here we are. Enough about me, on to the Lego. This set retails for £74.99 in the UK and contains 1,072 pieces, which includes three mini dolls. Full disclosure, I did pick up this set for a discount. I think I got it for about £50 from Argos back in October time. Inside the box, we got seven bags of Lego, two plates, and a cardboard envelope that I assume holds the manual. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it definitely looks like there's tape that's meant to be cut on this envelope. And there's definitely not tape there. It's just an impression on the cardboard, which is kind of odd, but never mind. But yeah, in there we've got our instruction manual and also a sticker sheet. My first impression is that the stickers look quite sophisticated for a friend set. You know, they look quite chic. I like them. Interested to see how they're used in the set. I'm also a big fan of the fact that the instructions give you a key for the different plants that are included in the set. That's pretty cool. I like that it's educational. But yeah, as always, I'm going to take you through this build bag by bag and see what I think at each stage. So let's get going. The build starts off with the mini dolls and also the side builds, which is basically a sort of picnic blanket and a book for one of the mini dolls. I do think the picnic blanket is a little bit unnecessary. In terms of the mini dolls, first up we've got Leanne. I love her snazzy torso. And also her flares. A book belongs to her and so does a pen. So I guess she's writing about the flowers she's seeing. Then we've got Nico. He seems to be a little bit more plain but I do like his jacket. I think he's in charge of photography. He's got a camera and also a selfie stick. I could not get him to stand up holding the selfie stick. I guess I don't mind the picnic setup, but it does look quite sweet, but I just don't know where to put it. It doesn't really fit anywhere on the main build. I guess kids would find something to do with it. Bag one also gets us to start building the exterior of the main building. I absolutely love this part. I mean, is it even a botanical garden if it doesn't have lily pads? Absolutely fantastic part usage because they're minifigure paint palettes. The ducks are so cute and Bricklink tells me that they're only in this set, which I can't quite believe nine months after it's released. I really like how they've used those curved tiles and the edges to create quite an interesting shaped pond. You know, they could have just made it circular, but this is much more interesting. It's cool how they've managed to create multiple layers of depth within the pond as well. I'm also a fan of how neat those steps look, and also the little sign. That's so true to life. Okay, on to bag two. In this bag we meet another mini doll, she's called Addie, and we also started building upwards. Addie has a really cool dungaree style dress. And she comes with scissors, so I think she's responsible for looking after the plants. In terms of the building, I'm already liking how many curved edges they're managing to get into this build. That's very reminiscent of a lot of botanical gardens that I've been to, and these ones particularly remind me of the windows at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Edinburgh. The waterfall piece coming down the side of the building is a really fun addition, and I think it looks great. Moving around to what will be the inside, we've created a little plinth for what I think is going to be the tree. We've also got our first gallery type room that's got a fantastic array of different shaped plants in it. This room is the designated succulent and cacti area, and I think they've done a fantastic job at capturing the style of those plants. We've even got another couple of stickers that make sure that our mini dolls know this. I think they look great. They're really sophisticated, really informative, just fantastic. In a similar vein, bag three starts on building another sort of gallery room. We've also added a few details to the front of the building, like these little plant pots at the front entrance. I really love the colour of that pink and the red together. It looks great. So moving around to the inside, we've got an absolutely amazing array of different plants. I'm so impressed by the part usage and the creation of these. The yellow one on the left is supposed to be an orchid, and I'm not quite convinced that that one hits the mark. But the reflesion next to it is incredible, and it uses basically minifigure shoulder pads to create the shape, which is just genius. The big one in the corner is supposed to be a titan arum. I think it looks quite good. It uses a broom brush end as one of the tan pieces, which again, quite clever. And the orange one next to it is supposed to be a bird of paradise flower, and that uses a mohawk. I also think that coral border tops this whole bright area off really nicely. This might be one of my favourite things I've ever built out of Lego. 
Okay, on to bag four. Um, in this bag, we've added a roof to that little area, but before we did that, we put some more plants in. I will say I'm not a huge fan of that peachy flesh-coloured Lego, and I don't think it looks great with the sand green. I think if I do end up modding this set, which I probably will, um, it might be something that I decide to switch out. If we lift up this skylight piece, we can take a better look at the plants we've added. Kindly ignore my thumb, I managed to slice it with a paper trimmer for the second time in three months. Oddly, the instructions don't tell us what this plant is supposed to be. Um, it kind of just looks like viney type things to me. That's my non-expert opinion, but I do like the colour of the magenta Lego. I'm going to turn it back around so we can see the final plant we added inside. And that is an Nepenthe, otherwise known as a monkey cup. And they've used saxophones to create the shape of that, which I think also is quite clever. Right, so on to bag five, and we finally added the main dome. Please ignore the reflection of my ring lights, that was unavoidable. First up, we've added another sticker over the main entrance, I think that looks great. I'm not sure if you can really see it on camera, but I was quite disappointed because a lot of these clear pieces were incredibly scratched. It's probably not a big deal because you can't really see it from a distance, but you know, when you're buying new Lego, you want it to be in good condition. We've added an ornate little fountain onto the balcony that seems to funnel down to the waterfall. Not quite sure how the physics of this situation work. Does it only function when there's rain, or are they pumping the water back up? I really like the ornate detailing on the top of the dome. That looks fantastic. But I think my favourite part of this bag is obviously the butterflies. While we're here, I really love that new orange slice tile as well. Um, you get two of them, obviously, because it's a small piece, which is pretty cool. But yeah, there's two butterfly designs. They both look absolutely stunning. They've got a lot of detail on there. And I really love that this bit of the top spins around. It's so much fun. I'm not a huge fan of how unfinished the back of this build feels, particularly where parts are overhanging the edges, like the butterflies are sticking out past the domes. But it definitely does look great from the front. Bag six is quite a small bag. It only involves building this tree. Full disclosure, I'm not a huge fan of building Lego trees. I find it quite fiddly and like difficult to get things in the same place that they are in the instructions because it's hard to see the right angles for things, if you get what I mean. I do really like the style of this tree. It does look good. But again, it feels like it's half outside the building. So bag seven is the final bag and it basically adds the finishing touches to everything, including parts of the building which we oddly didn't finish before. Like we didn't finish this tiling when we were working on this section of the build, which is quite odd. We've added a cute little bonsai tree, a watering can, what looks like tulips to me, but I could be wrong. They use frog parts, that's pretty cool. I absolutely love this ornate bench, it looks fantastic. Then moving over to the other side, we've added a beautiful tree that's in full blossom. I really love the colours on this tree, and the trunk style is just quite different to any other Lego trees I've ever built. It looks great. But yeah, in summary, I do think this is a fantastic Lego set, particularly when you look at it from the front. It is quite beautiful. I am not so keen on how open it is at the back in the central section. To me, it feels unfinished. Because of that, I'm quite glad I didn't pay full price. It does include some fantastic plants, some fantastic part usage, and I do really like the mini dolls. It also obviously has great scope for modification, and that's definitely something I will be doing in the future. I own two copies of this set. But yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this set in the comments, or if you've already modified it, I'd love to hear how you went about it. Personally, I'm kind of thinking of making it taller. I hope you have a great week and thank you again for watching.